hope you're doing okay. Uh, thanks for stopping by. If we haven't met before, uh, my name is Jeff and I'm uh, the owner of Oak Banner Studio, uh, which is the miniatures company that is working on uh, the Dreamstone uh, miniatures collection project. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, how we came to be uh, doing the miniatures, um, how we came to put the game together, uh, there's kind of steps along the way, and um, what we've got, yeah, what we've got in store for you. So um, I hope you uh, hope you like it. <laughs> um, the Dreamstone is one of those, um, or one of those things that you. Uh, encounter as a child and it just sits with you uh, for uh, for the rest of your life um, and if you're only discovering it now then uh, I'm very jealous for you because you've got uh, you've got a wonderful um, wonderful treat awaiting you uh, something fantastic is in store um, I can remember the first time that I saw the Dreamstone I was at a friend's house uh, waiting for my sister to be picked up from a music lesson um, and suddenly on the TV there's this um, stomping great theme tune um, and this huge blue dragon on the screen oh, Zordrak Lord of Nightmares and I must have been uh, seven or eight years old and I was absolutely hooked um, there's something uh, very magical um, about the show it's, it's a classic fantasy story uh, but it's got creature designs that are just so unique um, and all of the visuals that you get with a, an 80s animated uh, movie. Um, I think the thing that's most special uh, about the Dreamstone is that it's really about the villains, it's about the baddies. Um, the noobs are likeable um, but it's the antics of uh, Frizz and Nug and Blob that really make the show. Uh, it gets you rooting for these characters that are uh, just stuck on the wrong side of the planet and they're being forced to go on dangerous missions when really they'd much rather be sat at home with their feet up. Um, and that's that's what I, I really uh, like about it. It's a whole whole different take on, um, on viewing that kind of cartoon uh, environment. Um, and so I, uh, a few years ago, had this um, idea that uh, they would make fantastic um, miniatures, fantastic visuals that it would work really well in 3D. Um, we've seen similar things done with uh, with the asterisk um, uh, characters and with uh, the Nog in the Nog characters. I just thought the Dreamstone characters would be uh, would be a fantastic um, project to work on. So I sculpted up um, a, a couple of test minis. I did a Sergeant Bob and an Amberley mini. Um, and sent them to Martin Gates, who was the producer on the show, uh, not really expecting to, <laughs> to hear anything back, um, and got a very uh, enthusiastic email a few weeks later um, saying, yes, they would love to uh, to have a look at turning the Dreamstone characters into, uh, into miniatures. And that began uh, a bit of a lengthy process um, because there were various companies that hold various rights for uh, bits of the Dreamstone um, intellectual property uh, and so we went backwards and forwards between uh, a few companies for about 18 months um, and then finally everything was all together and the license was uh, was signed off um, and work could begin on on the sculpting um, and I'm sculpting everything uh, by hand in um, in modeling putty these are uh, epoxy putty um, sculpts sculpted to the, the size that they come out, which varies. The taller ones are about 45, 50 mil, um, and the smaller miniatures are 25 to 30 uh, millimeters uh, high. Um, they then go off uh, to a, a caster to be cast up in resin, uh, and they'll come back in uh, and be assembled, ready to be, uh, ready to be off to you guys. Um, the process of sculpting these uh, miniatures has taken me about uh, about eight months um, worth of work in these and they've all uh, all the designs um, went off to be approved uh, by Martin um, and his production company and when we made any necessary tweaks and they were all approved then uh, the first batch have been sent off to the casters so the 
um, the starter set, which is um, the Erpneys and um, Rufus and Amberly and Albert and the Dreammaker um, and Pildit and Erpgore. That's the first wave of miniatures. They've uh, they've all been uh, cast up, um, and the second wave of miniatures that includes Wilder and Spilder and Mr. Blossom um, and some more Erpneys. Um, they have uh, they've all been sculpted. And they have yet to uh, to go off to the casters. They will do that after the Kickstarter. And then if we go on to the wave three uh, miniatures, those at the moment only exist in um, paper form, in design form. Um, but I'll start work on those as soon as we uh, as soon as we get to them. Um, I'm really excited about the <laughs> the opportunity to be working on these um, on these characters. I think they've really stood the test of time, um, and I hope that through this we can uh, we can perhaps uh, meet some old friends who remember the show from the first time around, and also introduce uh, a new generation um, to the Dreamstone. Uh, now, to accompany the miniatures, we've got. Um, the Dreamstone Simple Miniatures game, um, which is a, uh, a fast-paced, simple, fun two-player game. Um, there's not a huge lot, a uh, huge amount to it rules-wise, so that's always a benefit. Um, and, and in the game, the Erpneys are trying to make up, make it away with the Dreamstone, um, and the Noops are trying to make them panic and run back to Billfeed. And because it's fairly simple. Um, you don't need any uh, previous gaming experience um, to enjoy this game. You can play it straight out of the straight out of the packet. Um, but if you do have uh, do have a bit of gaming experience, you'll find that uh, underneath its simple exterior, there's uh, there's a degree of strategy um, and quite uh, some quite nice bits to to get your teeth into. So it's simple, but uh, but not simplistic. Um, the role-playing game that we're also developing here, um, or have developed, um, this is a 100-page uh, rule book. The very front of it is rules. There you go. That's, that's all the rules. And the rest of it is background and artwork and um, hints for uh, hints and tips for running games. So this is really a, a great source book for the Dreamstone world. And if you're just interested in the, uh, in the animated series, uh, it's well worth picking one of these up just for the background uh, information that's in here. Um, it, it builds on the elements of the miniatures game. Uh, players become an elite squad of inept Erpneys sent on a dangerous mission by the Lord of Nightmares. Um, and as if their task weren't hazardous enough, uh, they've been landed with one of Erpgore's latest inventions. Uh, it's, of course, highly experimental. And because this is a game for uh, grown-up fans of the show, really, I've, I've tried to introduce a bit of the uh, the darker edge um, that uh, appears. It's quite um, visual in uh, Mike Jupp's pilot, The Dream Thief, that was the uh, the initial test um, uh, test footage for Dreamstone. Um, but the action it is all Mad Cat 90s cartoon fun. So you've got gags and gizmos and uh, all kinds of things that you can throw in. It's very, uh, again, very fast moving, um, simple rules, uh, but a lot of fun um, to play. Um, I think it would be fair to say that the Dreamstone is a significant part uh, of my childhood and um, certainly something that is extremely, uh, extremely memorable for me. Uh, and it remains a firm favourite to this day. Uh, so I am delighted that 30 years on um, from the first episode uh, of the Dreamstone airing, all of the episodes are uh, available to view. Uh, they've all been remastered. They're all up on YouTube. Um, and I'm just so pleased to be uh, a part of this project to celebrate its anniversary. So I hope you'll enjoy it um, as much as we have. Thank you.